Hi everyone, this is Oleg Shevtsov from Porta1. In this video, we'll talk about eSIM for an MVNO. To be more specific about the use case, uh, as an MVNO, I'd like to sell eSIM. eSIMs are becoming more and more popular these days. So many mobile operators and MVNOs thinking about adding an eSIM to their product portfolios. So by watching this video, you will learn the difference between SIM cards and eSIMs. And you will understand fundamental end-to-end -end flows related to eSIMs provisioning. So let's start. What's the eSIM card? What does it represent? SIM card is a microchip or a microcontroller. It is, uses, it is used to identify the subscriber with the network. So it identifies you as a subscriber when your phone accesses the mobile network, mobile core. The network recognizes you, verifies your identity, verifies your crypto keys and allows it to the network. So the network can be sure that uh, you are using the, this card and this card is not copied by some criminals, right? Because there are crypto keys loaded into the memory of the SIM card during the SIM card manufacture process. So each SIM card contains both identity and crypto keys to verify and confirm the, that the identity is valid. So I use my SIM card, my identity is valid, that's why Mobile Core uh, allows me to access the network and use some resources. So every time you ask your mobile operator to change your SIM card, old card is removed uh, and uh, a new one uh, is added to, the, to your profile in the Mobile Core, right? So SIM card is about crypto keys, which help uh, provider to verify that uh, the SIM card is genuine and uh, identifies you as a subscriber. And now let's talk about an eSIM. <laughs> What's, what, about, uh, what about an eSIM? An eSIM is also a microchip or a microcontroller. But uh, it's soldered. It's soldered to the phone's motherboard. So it's uh, already integrated into the motherboard of the phone. So essentially, an eSIM is just like a SIM, a similar microcontroller, uh, which is provisioned over the air. And in terms of functionality related to the mobile core, it is the same. So for mobile core, uh, an eSIM, is not different from a regular SIM card. It is also provides uh, identity and crypto keys to verify, uh, confirm that the identity is valid. It is very, very similar to a SIM card. But eSIM is configured over the air after, uh, after the, the card is issued. Uh, so it requires data links and from mobile core perspective, when the phone registers with the mobile network, there is no difference. So once you, once you get your eSIM for mobile core, it will be no difference whether you use an eSIM or a SIM, right? So now let's talk about the differences. Uh, my colleagues like to ask me, Alek, what's the difference between a SIM card and an eSIM? Phone support is limited. Phone support is quite limited. And also, according to Apple.com, only 200 mobile operators support eSIM worldwide. 200 mobile operators. Is it a big number or a small number? If you, if you Google or if you read Wikipedia, you will find that just in Europe, 
there are more than 1,000 mobile operators. So this figure, 200 mobile operators worldwide, uh, comparing to just uh, 1,000 mobile operators in Europe, makes me think that the eSIM technology adoption is not really widespread. <laughs> so please press the like button, subscribe to our channel if you like eSIM and if you want uh, eSIM to become a dominant technology. Yeah, yeah, press the like button. <laughs> it will help to promote eSIM. So what else is different from a regular SIM? Uh, crypto keys, crypto keys uh, for the SIM card are so-called carved in stone. So they are placed uh, in a memory, not, uh, not, not changeable usually, uh, usually memory, uh, on this uh, silicon microcontroller. So for a SIM card, we can say that uh, crypto keys are carved in stone, right? <laughs> or carved in silicon. Uh, as for the eSIM, eSIMs are provisioned over the air, so an eSIM uh, actually gets uh, this microchip, uh, gets crypto key keys from the, uh, from the provider through the internet. Uh, of course, there is security, encryption and so on and so forth, but uh, this is the, the major difference. Uh, carved in stone or in silicon. Uh, rather than uh, programmable. So for eSIMs, uh, these slots uh, having crypto keys are programmable, right? What else is different? Uh, difference is about uh, the uh, cost of the technology. So eSIMs uh, nowadays are more expensive, so the technology is not yet widespread. Uh, that's why only a limited number of uh, operators support the SIM at the moment. So it's more expensive. And what else is different? Uh, the difference is that uh, change of phone, change of phone actually results in a change of the eSIM. So for instance, uh, do you know what happens when you change your iPhone, uh, previous version of iPhone to iPhone 20? Yeah, a new eSIM is issued and uh, this profile will be downloaded to your iPhone. So that's why the difference is that uh, with uh, a regular SIM, you can just uh, extract the SIM module and plug into a different phone. Uh, for for eSIM users, uh, it will it will result in the issuing of a new eSIM and association with your subscriber profile in the network operator. Now let's touch end-to-end uh, -end flow. So what about the end-to-end -end flow? End-to-end -end flow related to eSIM issue can be explained with this diagram. eSIM providers issue the SIM card, the identity and crypto keys. This information, this information is sent to the mobile core and to the phone so that the phone is able uh, to use the keys. How does it happen? The subscriber scans a QR code. This QR code helps the phone to download uh, identity and crypto keys from eSIM solution provider. So here you can see on this slide that there is one, one more entity, eSIM solution provider. Uh, they are the same providers as for SIMs mostly trusted companies with good reputation like uh, Gimalto or Aberture. So these this, uh, this eSIM providers uh, generate and issue eSIM. What happens to the MNO or MVNO? They get uh, eSIM details uh, for, for their mobile network and uh, they associate, associate the eSIM details with a specific subscriber. And also you can see this electronic delivery. So after the, the, the eSIM is, uh, is activated, uh, there, there is a download uh, of the profile of the identity and crypto keys to the phone. So they are stored in the eSIM module soldered on the, on the motherboard of the phone, right? So it's not really, it's not really complex, uh, but again, 
it's worse to, to cover it in this video because uh, these processes, uh, these steps happens for every mobile operator, for every NVNO. So you, you will understand how, it, uh, how it's going to work for your business once you become uh, an eSIM NVNO, like NVNO uh, providing a SIM. But uh, <laughs> okay, what, what does the user get? We, we've touched that uh, the user gets something through this QR code. But what's in the QR, QR code? You can see that uh, the, the user actually gets uh, just a stream. A stream showing where to get uh, the, the profile from and some identifier. Some identifier which allows to download this uh, eSIM profile. And download happens only one time. So you can, for instance, uh, get a different form, uh, scan this activation code again, and uh, get uh, one more eSIM. No, it won't happen. The eSIM, eSIM provider, will not allow you to download the same profile again. So you will need to go to the operator. Uh, operator will, will generate you one more QR code or provide you with one more QR code. And uh, if you want a different phone, or if you want to move to a different phone, uh, the QR code will be different. So you can't, uh, as a user or as an NVNO, you can't uh, simply move this SIM card from one phone to another. Like most likely, it happens uh, with the different uh, eSIM. So eSIM will be created in you, or a different eSIM will be activated when you move to a different phone. And eSIM providers are. Uh, uh, responsible for downloading, for letting the user to download this eSIM profile only one time. So this is a very, very good feature of the eSIM providers uh, because previously I know that uh, in previous generations uh, 2G cards uh, were, it was possible to clone a SIM card because the crypto keys were not very strong and, and so on and so forth. Like with eSIM, uh, eSIM is downloaded only once, and uh, this is the key takeaway for you to remember. Okay, so now let's uh, let's summarize. If you fell asleep on the previous slides, it's time to wake up. Since an eSIM provider issues an eSIM containing crypto keys for the mobile phone to allow uh, providers access to the network. Your, it means that uh, if you are an MVNO, in this case, your MNO needs to have a way for eSIM provider to pass the authentication data for the issued SIM cards. So if an eSIM is not supported by the mobile core, like if an eSIM cannot get to the mobile core, HSS, UDR, or some other elements uh, where the information about the subscribers is, sto is stored. In this case, most likely you will not be able to provide, uh, as an NVNO, you won't be able to provide uh, eSIMs as a part of your portfolio. If you can, like if your MNO, if your uh, mobile core provider allows you to enter the SIM cards, for instance, through some application program interface or in some other ways, for instance, uh, you, send, uh, you send some data from your eSIM provider. In this case, most likely it will work. But uh, how you would uh, understand if uh, your MNO supports an eSIM or not? Like, the best question is to either check the documentation on the MNO site or ask them directly because most likely you will, you will uh, sign uh, some agreement with an MNO and this agreement uh, most likely will, will cover uh, whether you will be permitted to sell uh, eSIMs or not. Like if the MNO supports eSIM, most likely they already have uh, an interface to get the electronic SIM cards from eSIM vendors or eSIM 
providers. And in this case, uh, it will be easy to expose this interface to you as an MVN. All right. And also, what, uh, what else we need to remember? We need to remember that there are several eSIM variations or several eSIM use cases. For instance, for phones, for mobile phones, it's going to be different uh, from uh, IoT devices. And it's going to be slightly different from uh, variables because uh, Apple will have their own requirements, Samsung may have their own requirements, and so on and so forth. So, uh, when you think about an eSIM, consider that uh, there are different use cases or there are different variations of the eSIMs. Okay? So now the, last, the next slide is, uh, is about Portal 1. So at Portal 1, we specialize in online charging, billing and rating. There are, on this slide you can see just a few of our 500 plus customers worldwide. They are MVNOs, MNOs, service providers, uh, ITSPs, NTSPs and so on. So reach out to us. Let's make eSIMs global, available worldwide to all MNOs and all MVNOs. So that when I travel to some different uh, country and I like buying uh, SIM cards in distant, distant, uh, distant countries to study their mobile product, to study end user experience, activation flows and so on. So when I travel, I'd like to purchase and activate eSIMs. Extracting in a SIM card is painful. So I'd like to forget about this experience. If you find SIM cards a thing of the past, let's join our efforts. Our success in eSIM rollouts will simplify customer's experience. Right? So reach out to us and let's make your eSIM story uh, become a success. Thank you.